Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for clicking. Welcome back to another Baseball League logo ranking. We actually haven't done one of these on this channel in a while, and we're more than due. Uh, we're we're going to be talking about the Ohio Valley Conference today. This is yet another summer collegiate baseball league. We've done a number of those on this channel already, and don't make the mistake like I did of confusing this with the Ohio Valley Conference. This is like NCAA Division I. Um, this is just like a summertime collegiate league. Let's talk about just this logo itself for a second with this Ohio Valley League. I love this logo, first of all, uh, because I'm a huge geography geek, and I love that we can see the locations for the teams within like the state of Kentucky, really, that is kind of the forefront of this logo here. But that said, it is a little deceiving because if we count the number of stars that are in this logo, which kind of represent the number of teams in this league, we see nine. This logo is a bit outdated, as cool as it is. There are a total of 12 teams in this league, and as always, we're gonna start with what I consider the worst logo, working our way up to number one, worst to first, starting with number 12. That's gonna give us the Molenberg County Stallions. I hope I'm saying this right, Molenberg. I, I might be mispronouncing a few teams going forward, but try my best here, the Molenberg County Stallions. This logo works really well for one team in particular, which is the Denver Broncos. I mean, this is just a carbon copy ripoff, just with uh, worse colors, and it's just kind of a little janky. It doesn't feel as sharp or crisp as the uh, Denver Broncos logo. So I never really loved that at all. In fact, I I strongly dislike it. I don't want to say hate, but I strongly dislike it when these teams, whether they be semi-pro, collegiate, whatever, just have a blatant copy-paste of an existing professional team. It feels lazy. It feels very like middle school. I see that a lot in like middle school and even like some small town high schools do this tactic a lot. This looks great because we've seen it before. <laughs> The Denver Broncos use this logo, so it had to be last just for that reason. I mean, this is just a cut paste job of an existing professional team. At number 11, we've got the Bowling Green Pistons. This piston guy actually kind of freaks me out a little bit, just straight up. I have no idea what kind of expression that is that he's making. It's it's kind of got this like 50s gangster sort of deal. Like I imagine he'd be like toothpick in mouth, like flipping a coin. He freaks me out. He just, he freaks me out. He freaks me out. I gotta stop looking at it. We're moving on. At number 10, we've got the River Dogs. And uh, yeah, this isn't the worst I've ever seen or the worst we've ever even talked about on this channel but I just feel like there are so many conflicting elements going on. We've got a shield in the background that's containing all these pieces of this bridge, which is really cool. I do like that piece. It's got this bulldog in there that we can see. I guess that is the river dog. And it reminds me of this meme that I saw a long time ago that I'll, it just lives rent free in my head. Every middle school, high school, small town had this like crappy bulldog. Everyone's seen this bulldog logo, but all of this is to say that everything just kind of clashes for me. And it's not bad overall, but it is just kind of like jarring to look at. You're like, well, this is just a lot to take in all at once. So tone it down a little bit, River Dogs. Just tone it down a bit. Next up, we've got the Henderson Flash. And so like, this is what I'm talking about. This is toned down. It's clean. It's crisp. It's got, it's very sharp with the font choices. And yeah, this is just a lot easier to look at. So it's going to rank a little bit higher than River Dogs. Just a mess. It really does bring me down though. I've talked about this on this channel before. The established uh, in the logo, I don't care. You know, it takes away from the rest of the logo. Like, let's focus on the team name or the location in which the team is from. Like, those elements are so much stronger for a logo than the established date. No one cares. It just take. It just is adding too much text and font, whatever. Just take it away. Everything else is super cool, though. I love the circular uh, outline that the text is creating. I love the use of blue and yellow. That's such a strong combination. It's got the little flashes like within the H and then on either side of Henderson Flash. And yeah, uh, all of that is working for me, but just take out the established date, don't care. Everything else, awesome logo. Next up, we've got the Full Count Rhythm. A very interesting team name here. Actually, the champions of this most recent 2023 season. Obviously, this is very simple here. Uh, we're just seeing a cool, funky R inside of a guitar pick. And yeah, that's cool. <laughs> some simple colors of two shades of blue and white and overall I think that the simplicity works to its advantage here like this isn't giving us a lot of information in the logo as far as like what this is the team name where they're from like what sport this even is like this could be a logo for like a guitar company if we didn't know that we were talking about a baseball team even the name itself full count rhythm like I would assume that we're talking about uh, an instrument company not a baseball team so I do like this but Overall, I just think this could be maybe shaped up a little bit and reworked, and it's like maybe incorporate some baseball elements too. But who am I to say? They just won the championship, so they're doing something right there. Next up, we've got the Clarksville 
Whirly Birds. Now there's a reason that this logo made it into the thumbnail for this video and it's because this is just so bizarre that it really catches your attention like both in just the name and the logo itself. I guess if I were to picture what a whirly bird is, this would probably be it. His head is a baseball, so there we go. We know we're looking at a baseball team. And he's got this really goofy, cartoony expression that's just like so fun, but like just, it's just, I've already said goofy, but it's the perfect description here. This is just the goofiest logo that I've seen in a hot minute. And I love it. The text and the font don't have that same energy and goofy cartoonishness that the whirly bird itself has. So I kind of wish that you know, those two pieces have worked a little bit more with each other with the Whirly Bird head and the Clarksville Whirly Birds font and text. But beyond that, this is this logo is hysterical and I love it. Moving right along, we've got the Fulton Railroaders. This logo is super, super cool. I kept it in this white border here uh, just so you could see a little bit more of the details and it was honestly just a lot easier to do that personally than having to magic wand uh, all the white space out of this and Photoshop uh, was causing me such a headache. So I kept the white border here so you can see a little better all the details that are in this logo. There are a ton of them. This is a very old kind of like classic collegiate logo. It actually reminds me of old logos for the Purdue Boilermakers in a lot of ways. I think there's a lot of similar energy going on there with this train that's just coming at you full speed. I feel like this logo just holds a ton of history and carries with it a lot of weight and motion and kind of aggression, like this train looks tough. I don't. I would not want to be standing in front of this train when it's crossing on the track, for sure. Tons of energy, a lot of color, and it just holds a lot of like, this has, just has like a timeless historic look to it. And I, I like that. It's the same reason why I have at number four, the Paducah Chiefs. You know, if I'm just looking at this logo objectively, I really like it and I think that it's done really well. I'm just looking at this for what it is. I think it's great. The Paducah Chiefs, very cool logo, uh, very timeless and historic looking logo um, that I really, really like. But it didn't quite crack the top four. That's gonna start with the Louisville Jockeys. As I was looking at these logos as a whole and sort of like, you know, shaken up where I thought some of these would land, I thought this might be top three, maybe even like number two or one. Uh, but the longer I looked at it, the more his expression started to kind of freak me out a little bit. I don't really know what kind of expression that is. Uh, he looks neither fierce uh, nor tough nor like excited. He looks just kind of like checked out a little bit. Like he just has this glazed over expression. I think what I love most about this logo though, if I can just like ignore his expression for a minute, are all the little details. Like he's straddling not an actual horse, but a horse on a stick which is super funny and he's got these really cool little spurs. Like I live in San Antonio, so I'm always gonna give an extra like shout out to the, any anything with spurs in the logo. A lot of little things are working for me here as a whole. Again, the expression is a little weird and then we have kind of the one of the things that I just get really frustrated when I see time and time again, where we have like a logo element and then either above or below, in this case it's above, a text-based element um, and those things are just not it, working with each other here. We just have this this up here and this down here and they have no interaction with each other whatsoever. Put them together as like a single element. This would work a lot better for me, but it's kind of a small thing. I think overall this works really well. Also, I love the colors, the brown and green uh, really pop and this looks really nice. At number three, maybe a bit of a surprising choice for those at home watching. We've got the Hop Town Hoppers. I just got done torching a team for an established date in their logo. I think if you're going to do it, you kind of have to lean more into it from a historic standpoint. Like this team established 1903, that's insane. Like this team has been playing ball for 120 years. So, you know, as opposed to what we saw with the Henderson Flash, like since 2016, no one cares about 2016. 1903, if you can say that you've been playing ball for that long, like that has a little bit more significance and weight to it. I really feel like that's the better way to do it. And from a design standpoint, this works really nice too with Hop Town kind of arching on the top, Hoppers down at the bottom. I love the alliteration with the established 1903 kind of in the middle sandwich between. So overall that works really strong. We've got a baseball in the middle too with a big H in it and we've got that red and I can't really tell if that's a black or just a super dark blue, but either way that works really strong. Got some stars in there too. Like I think that this is just so crisp and clean and it helps me to kind of overlook the established date. That doesn't really bother me in this case because overall, again, this is just really nicely done. Graphic designer for the Hop Town Hoppers, whoever you are, job well done. This looks fantastic. At number two, we've got the Dubois, Dubois, 
Du Bois? I'm going to say Du Bois. Du Bois County Bombers. I had a really strong debate at the end of the day if this was going to be number one or two. There was no question that this was going to be in the top three. The strength of this is just incredible here. We've got a bat airplane with this really awesome, like, snarky, in-your-face kind of expression. Like, he's just ready to just dive on in. So much characterization. I talked about a similar logo with the Texas Collegiate League. That was my number one for that league because of, again, like, it's, it's kind of the same sort of concept when you're talking about like a bomber it's both in this case like a an airplane obviously but also you know from a baseball context you're talking about like hitting bombs like dingers home runs this logo again is no different than everything that i had to say about the brasses valley bombers some of the best logos in baseball like across not even just across this channel that the ones that we've talked about but just baseball as a whole like this logo uh, and the Brazos Valley Bombers, I'm kind of lumping them <laughs> together um, because I could say the same about both. Like, incredible. Just incredible. But for the purposes of our video today with the Ohio Valley Conference, I had to give the number one spot to the Madisonville Miners. Like, what a freaking logo. Got a miner here with a baseball on his headlamp peeking over this incredible miner's text. Like, that font choice is awesome. And the layering here with him kind of behind the text creeping up and over it with this really nice yellow background, some rays popping out of it, Madisonville over the top. Like there's a lot of really nice layering going on here. There's a lot of great colors going on here. The expression that the miner is making is horrifying. Like he's got a little bit of yellow in his eye and he, he looks scary. Like he freaks me out, but in a good way. Not like the Bowling Green Pistons that freaked me out because I couldn't tell what that expression was and he just was kind of creeping me out. Like this guy, his expression is, is scary. It's intense, like you don't see his mouth, you just really see his eyes. It's also kind of interesting that they made him gray. Like he kind of looks like a zombie a little bit, um, if you can kind of picture that. Like he just has like this gray, sort of dark, almost like decayed skin. I don't know if I'm just looking too far into that. Kind of a, a good healthy amount of colors. We got four big colors going on here, but um, they really complement each other really nicely. And overall, yeah, this logo, uh, it's, it's working for me. Madisonville, shout out. Real one. Well, y'all, that is going to do it for the Ohio Valley Conference. Thank you so much for hanging out, for clicking, for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'm trying to put out more baseball content for you guys, more league logo rankings and just kind of baseball content as a whole. I'm actually going to Richmond, Virginia here in just a couple weeks for my sister's wedding, planning on seeing a Flying Squirrels game as they host the Akron Rubber Ducks. So look forward to sharing that on Instagram. I'll post some pictures. This is my personal Instagram up here if you'd like to follow. And I actually have a second Instagram account here that I haven't used for a while that I've recently kind of dusted off. It's called Game Day Brews. And what I do is as I'm traveling watching baseball games, I just take a photo of my beer uh, in front of a nice backdrop of the stadium. So feel free and follow that if that sounds interesting to you. I'm actually getting a call from my brother right now, so I'm going to answer that. Appreciate you guys again. Thank you so much. Leave a like if you enjoyed this. Comment down below. Tell me which logos you like the most, which ones you hate the most, and which leagues you'd like to see me talk about in the future. Again, thank you so much, guys. We'll see you in the next video.